Uh, if, now, Rick, were you, Rick, were you yourself in law enforcement? I beg your pardon? Were, were you yourself in the law enforcement field? Uh, my, full, my whole family was. My father was a chief of police, uh, uh, but I, I wasn't directly involved myself, no. All right, but you grew up with, the, with a questioning mind. You grew up with a mind that questioned events. You didn't just assume uh, things. You had, to, you had to get to the bottom of it through investigation. I'm sure your father schooled you in thinking for yourself, correct? That, okay, that's exactly right. Okay, he, did, he didn't believe in the competence of any coroner. Uh, any time there was a murder in his jurisdiction, he wanted to be called first, and he wanted to be first on the scene uh, so that he could verify what happened because he had no confidence in the coroner's. Isn't that something? Most of All right. Call. Thank you. See, I get, I get the best callers in the world. When I talk to these guys that I get on this show, I get a feeling of reality I don't get in my regular life. It's like Northern California is filled with ghosts, empty, can, empty husks running around to Google, running from Google to Facebook with empty eyes. You look behind. There's nothing behind the eyes. There's empty souls. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Nothing. They could have the newest, most expensive house and car in the world, and there's nothing behind the eyes. Did you want to talk about that for a minute? Listen to this one. Where is this one about Apple? You're not going to believe what Apple's doing. This is a shocking story. They should throw the president of Apple in prison. Tim Cook should be thrown in prison for what he's doing. Tim Cook, the president of Apple, should be thrown in jail. He is not a libertarian for doing this. He's a greedy, greedy skunk, in my opinion. Apple opposes order to help FBI unlock phone belonging to San Bernardino shooter. Well, you know, San Bernardino shooter means Muslim murderer. Remember the Muslim murderers who slaughtered those people in cold blood? Muslim murderers. You forgot that already? Well, Apple Inc. CEO, the creepy Tim Cook, the slimy Tim Cook, says his company will resist a federal judge's order to access encrypted data hidden on a cell phone that belonged to the Muslim terrorist couple who killed 14 in San Bernardino last year. In a statement released early Wednesday, the slimy Tim Cook of Apple said that such a move would undermine encryption by creating a backdoor that could potentially be used on other future devices. Listen, Cook, you are covering for murderers in the opinion of anyone with a brain, and you're also a greedy slime ball. I'll be right back. He says, Judge, I'm at Cibolo Creek Ranch, and a Supreme Court justice has just passed away, and I need someone here immediately. Uh, both Justice of the Peace are out of town at this time. Sheriff, what did you say? Which Supreme Court justice died at Cibolo Creek Ranch, and the phone was dead? Did you hear that? The phone was dead at the ranch. When, when Scalia was found dead, there was, the phones were out. It's like a bad movie. So, someone just wrote this, and it's their writings, not mine. He says, I can reach no other conclusion that this was a politically motivated assassination. I believe this was an inside job and that someone present at the location poisoned him. Now, remember, this is a, someone I don't know. This is what people are thinking. And he writes this, after all, poisoning was a method commonly used in ancient times for people in power to get rid of someone they didn't want getting in their way. The way this whole thing went down screams foul play. Why? His host was a Democrat and an Obama supporter and donor. Scalia's sudden tiredness could have been a symptom of poison starting to take effect. The unrumpled clothes, people normally shift positions during sleep, which would almost certainly have rumpled his clothes, would seem to indicate he died shortly after going to bed. The pillow over his face, strange, but I'm not sure what that signifies. A doctor pronouncing him dead over the phone without having seen the body? The authorities not even sending a coroner to examine the body? The extreme haste to get rid of the body, no autopsy, no toxicology, Obama's frantic. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person. Home of borders, language, culture, 
And here he is, Michael Savage. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. When the world seems to shine like you've had right, too that's much That's amore. Wine. That's what we're going to do is just music this hour. We don't want to talk about Scalia's death. We don't want to talk about Obama and the very strange, strange haste to get rid of the body of Scalia, no autopsy, no examination, no toxicology. Obama railroading a replacement for Scalia so soon. Before the body was cold, the fanatic New World Order president was already stacking the courts and threatening anybody who opposed him. So you say, well, was this all planned out to enable him to stack the court with a left-wing fanatic before he left the office? That's what people are asking. I mean, let's get, to, you know, as they say, let's cut to the chase, as they say in America. You know, a little common parlance here. What's underneath it all? Why are we even asking these questions? If this president were a man who was trustworthy, was a man who was trustworthy, if this was a man who was benign towards the people, if this man was a good man in all ways, we wouldn't even be asking this question, but he isn't. He's the opposite of all of that. He has shown himself to be unworthy of any trust whatsoever. So we're asking the questions that people ask when they're living in a mild dictatorship. The great Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, who I quoted yesterday, I know it went over most of your heads, because you're not interested in yesterday nor tomorrow, you're only interested in today. Lao Tzu wrote, a leader is best when people barely know he exists, less good when they obey and acclaim him, worse when they fear and despise him. He wrote, if you fail to honor people, they fail to honor you, Lao Tzu. Obama fails to honor people. He only honors the lowest elements of society on a regular basis in the White House. Take a look at his parties. Take a look, take a look at who he's invited there. He invites Al Sharpton into the White House over 30 times, a street rat like Sharpton, and he uses him to say who should be the next Supreme Court nominee. First, the Attorney General. Al Sharpton, Freddie's fashion mart, Tawana Brawley. So don't tell me Obama is such a sterling man and that I'm just running him down for reasons that you can, you know, fill in the blank. Okay, we got it. We hear them on college campuses all, you know, I, I get the game. I know how the game works, but it doesn't work on me. My grandfather was an immigrant to America who died of a heart attack from working hard enough to bring his, his people over from the old country. You know, we didn't own any slaves. We didn't inherit any money. No, no skids were greased for me to go to private school like they were greased for Obama. Don't tell me what I know, know, uh, know to be true here. I know what's true. You don't know what's true. I do. And I have an obligation to talk about this. So if you want to talk about it, you can. This is a big story. And there's no answers yet. The answers were covered up too quickly, much too quickly. Anyone can talk about Cruz versus Trump, which I think is a, is a disaster, incidentally, for the for the whole conservative movement. And I'm I'm really surprised that Cruz and Trump took the bait of those creeps at the debate. You see, this is what I'm saying. It was CBS who set them up against each other. They shouldn't. I've been saying it for months. Don't take the bait. Stop taking the bait. Turn it back on Hillary. Why are you arguing with each other? Never argue with each other. Argue with Hillary. Don't even mention that scandalous creature from the gutters of New York, Bernie the Spritzer, Seltzer man. Bernie the Spritzer. Don't even talk about him. He's, he's not a factor. He's only to make Hillary look more normal, more mi mi midstream, mainstream, midstream, midstream. No, midstream's in a urologist's office. I'm sorry. I was thinking about a medical visit. And I thought of Bernie. I couldn't help. I said Spritzer. My mind jumped. It was a psychological leap. I said Spritzer. I meant I, a midstream. I meant mainstream. But uh, getting more serious, the issue is Scalia. No one's talking about it. It's down to the wire here. Will this be gone by the weekend? No. No, I'll tell you what's going to happen. As sure as I'm sitting here, some foreign press reporter, a real reporter from Japan, Italy, Germany, someone in the news media, some real reporter, some woman who wants to get to the bottom of the, of the truth is going to go to Texas and is going to start poking around. And this is going to become a mystery story that doesn't end. It will not end. It will not end. Where are the Cohen brothers who like to do fake movies? No country for old men. Oh, they're such geniuses. 
Where are all the great writers of Hollywood? Such geniuses. Where are they? Nowhere to be heard. Nowhere to be heard. All the brave actors who pretend that they're war heroes. Where are they today? How come they're not speaking out? Where are they? Where are the great Brad, Brad Pitt? Where are they? All the war heroes. They appear in, in fake tanks, fake airplanes, fake submarines, fake parachutes. But when you really need them, they're nowhere to be found. Where are they? Somewhere uh, in, in, a, in a motel in Palm Springs? <clears throat> it's as graphic as I can get on a radio show. Scalia found dead with pillow over his head. All right, so the pillow, dismiss the pillow, if you will. Let's put pillow aside. Let's put pillow aside. The cover-up has begun. There's an urgent call for a, an investigation. That's what we're talking about. Obama poindexter pictures fuel Scalia suspicions. Phone was dead at the ranch. What? You didn't know that? So I'll say it again. Should we keep talking about Judge Scalia's death or move on and talk about what? I also raised the issue of Scalia violating the law by accepting the free trip and flight. I'm sorry I have to do that. Those are reportable gifts, incidentally. A reportable gift. Free vacation at the exclusive Sabalo Creek Ranch, found dead inside a guest room. The trip the Washington Post reported yesterday was a gift from the ranch's owner. So, okay, free hotel, free charter flight, not charged for a stay. Who was the mystery guest he was with? The judge was treated no differently by me as no one was charged for activities, room and board, beverage, etc. Okay. Poindexter denied paying for Scalia's charter flight to the ranch and declined to identify the friend who accompanied Scalia or any of the other guests on the trip. Those guests, and, and incidentally, you want to talk, every one of them needs to be questioned by the FBI. Every guest at that ranch needs to be questioned by the FBI. Any links to Scalia, any pending cases, something's wrong with this picture. You remember the movie A Touch of Evil? No. Remember Orson Welles? No. But there was a movie done years ago about a death and a cover-up in a Texas uh, border town done by one of the great film directors of all time, Orson Welles. Do we have that? We had it yesterday. I'm, I guess we don't have it. We'll have it into the next segment. It's a great interchange. Jim got it yesterday. I'm sure you can find it. And I'll take your calls now. WFJX Radio. Richard, go ahead, please. You stayed at this ranch? Tell us about it. Yes, uh, I stayed there a few years ago. I was out in West Texas hunting and not at that ranch, but we just happened to be put up there because it was off-season. But I w two things I want to bring out. One is that it really is an extremely remote place. It's hard to believe there's a place that remote in the United States. And uh, it's 20 miles or so from the next ranch. It's very desolate country, a long way from... Why, why would a Supreme Court justice in bad health choose to go there? Let's say we're going to buy the argument of those who are covering up the, the story, saying he was just an old man who died in his sleep. Why would, if, if he was in such bad health, would he choose to go there with no doctor present? Well, well, that was the other thing I was going to say, was that it's not a place that you would go to unless you were with people you knew and all. It's, it's, a, it's just that out of the way. It's a, right, and if you're a Supreme Court justice, you go there with a doctor if you're in bad health, don't you? I, I would imagine. If a guy's 79 and he's suffering from various ailments, why would he go to a remote ranch like that with no medical assistance in the, in the vicinity? So right away, that's a red herring. I mean, sorry, that's a question mark, right? Who, who, who decided he should go there for him? Yeah. Did he clear it with his doctor? All right, so there's another element to the puzzle. Now, I want to go back to Tim Cook, the slime ball of our time. Sli you know, Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple. A federal judge ordered Apple to access encrypted data hidden on a cell phone that belonged to the murderous Muslim terrorists who killed 14 people in San Bernardino not too long ago. In a statement released just today, the slimy Apple CEO Cook said he will not comply with the judge's order. Now, why will he not comply? Well, the liberals will say, well, because it invades our privacy. But you see, Apple has the exclusive technical means which would enable the government in completing this research, but will not provide the assistance voluntarily. The device is an iPhone 5 that was given to Syed Rizwan Farouk by the San Bernardino County Health Department and was used in his job as an inspector. But the tech giant Apple will not help law enforcement break the 
the code on that phone. 